Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about string handling in Java. So we have been dealing with string types uh, throughout different sessions in this whole series but in this session we are going to look at a lot of different utility methods which the string class provides. String class is very versatile in Java and it provides a lot of handy functions which can help you manipulate strings in multiple ways. For example, if you want to trim a string or if you want to append a string to another string or if you want to find a particular character at a particular index or if you have an index and you want to see what character is present at that particular index or if you want to do any other kind of pattern matching in the string. So string is very versatile in that in that context. And today we will have a look at some of those methods. So I've just opened the Java docs API for string and you can see in the method summary, you will find a long list of methods. We will go through some of these methods. For example, if I just show you a snapshot of what I'm talking about, it has a care at method. So you provide a index and integer index and this particular method will tell you which character is present at the, that particular index in the string. Remember string is basically a zero based character array zero index based character array. Similarly, you can also call code point at which is going to return the character in the Unicode code point at a specified index. Similarly, compare to method can be used to compare two strings with each other. Compare to ignore case is also there which can compare two strings ignoring whether they are in uppercase or lowercase. You can use concat method to join two strings together. You can use the contains method to find if a particular character or a particular sequence of character exists in a particular uh, string or not. You can do a content matching. Uh, you can do copy. You can also see if a particular string ends with a particular character or a sequence of characters. So there are tons of different methods available here. And please do check out the API because like I said, this is going to come very handy when you start writing real time projects or the real life projects. So with that knowledge, let's go to uh, our IDE and let's have a look at some of these examples in action. So uh, here also you can obviously have a look at the string class uh, uh, from the IDE itself. Just write string and hit control and you will see an uh, 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 underline and a hyperlink. So just click on this and you and the string class will be opened and you can actually read on about the documentation of the whole string class. But we are not going to do that. We are going to have a look at some real life examples of how we can use different methods of the string class. So here I've created two strings, str1 and str2. str1 is holding a string which says John is studying and str2 is holding a string which says in college. Now the first utility function which I'm going to talk about is the length method. So if you want to find out what is the length of this particular string, then you can just call the length method on the string and that is going to return the length of the current string. Let's see that in action. Let me comment the rest of the code and let's see this one in action. So if I run this program, I get the value 16. So if you count this one, two, three, four, space is also counted five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you get the exact length of the string when you call the length method. Similarly, another method is concat method and concat method is used to concatenate two strings together. Concatenation basically means joining two strings together. So if you want to join the string one and string two, then just call str1 dot concat with the string you want to append or you want to concat. So the concat method on the left hand, left hand side of the string is going to get concatenated with the argument which you pass in the concat method. So let's see that in action now and let's see the result as well because I'm storing the result of concatenation into a new variable and printing that variable. So I get this whole text here and you see the studying in just got merged. There was no space in between because there is no space here. If you just put it like this and if you rerun this, you will see the proper space as well while concatenation. One of the things which I also want to call out is strings are immutable in nature. When I say immutable, it, it means that once you have created this str1 holding this value, then st then this particular object's value pointing to str1 cannot be changed. You cannot mutate the strings. If you try changing str's value, Java is going to create a new object and point str1 to that object. But the object which was created initially is not going to be overwritten. So 
remember that concept that whenever you are doing manipulations on the string the previous string object still remains there it doesn't get overwritten or it doesn't get modified whenever you modify a string you get a new object that's the property of string so we saw the concatenation let's move ahead uh, this also format method format method is used to dynamically populate some parts of the string for example if you have a long list of students and if you want to print the name of students then what you can do here is that you can change uh, you can assign those names to certain variables and you can point or refer those variables in the string with the percentage syntax percentage s syntax basically so the string dot format method is used to supply dynamic values inside a static string so in this case this part of the string is static where i'm saying the name of the student is then in the next string remember plus also can concatenate it it is also doing the exact same thing as the concat method you can it's just a shorthand so i'm creating first string then i'm creating second string but here i'm writing percentage s i will come to that and then i've created one more string where i'm using percentage b so what happens that java format method supports certain special type of references for example if you want to dynamically place a string you can use percentage s if you want to dynamically place an integer value you can write percentage d in the format method similarly you can also write other percentage f for for a, for a float value and there are more other similar placeholders which are available in the format method so do check out the format method documentation if you want to know what all percentage types or variable types can be dynamically placed inside the format method here i'm just using percentage s and percentage d and then once you have created the first part of the format method which is string with with dynamic placeholders till this particular point then you put a comma and you start providing the values remember the sequence of the values have to be exactly the same way in which you have used them here so if percentage s is coming first then you have to supply a string value if percentage d is coming after that after the string value you have to provide an integer value if there was another percentage s after percentage d in the same string then after 21 you had to provide another string value so that's the con contract which format method needs to honor and if i run this particular program and if i say if i try to see the output let's try to see the output as well and for the output i need to store this uh, whole string dot formats output into a variable so let's say i say string r and then i can print r and see what comes out so that's it let's run the program now and now you will see this line the name of the student is john comma and the age is variable is 21 i think it's coming because i've just wrote variable is here but if you if you remove this and if you say the age is percentage d then you will get an, a nice human readable output without any extra formatting so the name of the student is john and the age is 21 and that there was a comma that's why you still see the comma but this is the basic idea with using the format method now another method which i want to talk about is the char at method let me comment the previous output so that we can follow along so i'm just going to comment all of this which we have covered already and let's focus on the char at method so char at method can be used to find the character present at a particular index in a string so whatever index you specify in the char at method the character present at that particular index will be returned so when i say str1 dot char at 5 remember strings are zero based indexed character arrays so 0 1 2 3 4 5 at 5 i is present so this char at method should return i so if i run this particular program yes i see the output as i now let's move ahead uh, with the next example or the next api call the next api call is the um, usage of equals method where i can see if the two strings are equal or not so here i'm saying str1 dot equals str2 if both strings are same it is going to return true otherwise it is going to return false so if i run this i get the output as both strings are different it goes in the else block because str1 and str2 are different they are holding different values so here the exact content of the string is going to be matched the next one is the index of method so index of method can be used just for the reverse functionality of char at 
in caret we were supplying the index and getting the character here we can supply the character and get the index of it so what what is going to happen that you write the uh, string dot index of and then you supply the character which for which you want to find the index of so i supply y here and if i run this particular program for this line the output is 12. let's see if the output is correct so here if you try to find what is sitting at the index number 12 in this string so again 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. so yes y is present at the 12th index and that's the output i get what if you provide a, a character which is not present in this particular string let's say z which is not there and see what the output is in that case you will get the output as minus one so if the character is not present in the string you will get the output as minus one another thing what if the uh, character is uh, present more than once in the string for example i is present more than one time in the string so if i write i here whether i get the index of this i or this i let's see so i'm going to run this program again and i get the value five so five is basically this i because this i is definitely not five it's far uh, far farther index so the first match of the index is going to be returned in terms of the index of method okay so that was about the index of let's look at the next one which is the replace in replace it's uh, as the name suggests you can replace a character or a sequence of characters in a string by calling the replace method on the string on which you want to do the manipulation and remember you're doing the manipulation here so the previous object is not going to get overwritten but a new object is going to get created so what i want to replace is with r so in this particular string i see an occurrence of s here so this s should be replaced with r if the replace functionality works as i just explained so let's run this program and yes i can say instead of s i see r being replaced there and that's the usage of the replace method next one is the split method where if you want to split the string into multiple elements so you just call the split method and you provide the separator here i'm separating the string whenever there is a space I'm basically breaking up the string into multiple substrings. That's what I'm doing here, or multiple strings, I would, I would just call it as. So whatever separator you provide, whenever the string is going to encounter that separator, it is going to split one part of it. So in I'm providing the separator as a space, it means in this particular case, I'm going to get three items. The first breakup is going to, go, uh, going to happen here. So the John part of it will go out and is will go out in a separate string then again between is and studying i have another space so there will be another break here so i should get three elements if i call the split method one element will be holding the value john the second element will be holding the value is and the third element will be holding the value as studying and then i'm printing the, all the elements of the of the array remember that split method returns a string array so that's what i'm using here to store the output of the split method and then i'm just using the streams api to iterate over this string array outputting or printing the each element of the array so let's run this program okay so i can see three different outputs through this system.out.println first john then is then studying like i said split method is going to create a three element size array of strings because i'm separating it based on the space the last utility function which i want to talk about so this is the last one but i'm skipping some of some more due to the interest of the time but like i said do check out the documentation to read or understand more about other string utility methods which i'm not covering here in this session so the last one i'm going to talk about is the substring method and substring is basically going to take a mini string out of the long string so what if you want to trim the string what if you have a long string and you only want to get a part of the string so you can specify the starting point you can specifying the you can specify the end point and whatever string characters are present between the starting index and the end index will be taken out from the string and you can store that output into a new string and print that so here i'm calling the substring method providing the starting index as 1 and the ending index as 5 let's run this program and interpret the output so i'm getting the output as o h n so what is happening here let's go back to the str1 so i said start with one remember string is a zero based index so it starts with zero one it starts with o because o is present at the first index and then i'm going up till five so one gets printed whatever character is present at one index get printed second index get printed third index gets printed 
fourth index gets printed which is just a space and then the fifth index is i which is not printed here so it means that when you call the string substring method then the end index position will not be printed it starts from the beginning index and it will go till index minus end index minus one position in terms of printing because if you select this you'll see an extra bar here because the space is also getting printed so it is printing everything before the fifth index it will not include the fifth index character remember that when you use the uh, substring functionality that the end index is not included in the substring if you want to include that you need to increase the index by one so for example if you want to print i as well then you have to write it as end index as six. And if you run this, then you will also see I now. Yep. So that is how this uh, uh, substring functionality works. And that's all I want to cover in this particular session. In the next session, we are going to have a look at some of the methods and utilities of the java.lang package, which is a very popular package in Java. And if you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.